this ethnic organization required the government to send out uh, anthropologists, ethnographers, as they're known in Russian, to go out and find out where the people are, what they're like, and uh, what they need. And so they sent all these anthropologists out at the very beginning of the Soviet Union were in the direct employ of, of the state, not terribly unlike the Mexican case where anthropologists were also seen as being useful for understanding local social processes and informing state policy. Uh, and this also came out of a Russian tradition of uh, understanding indigenous Siberians as being a key to power in Siberia, in this vast region which was thought of by Europeans as being a wasteland, uh, a frozen, desolate place, um, inhospitable, barely habitable, but yet uh, all of these uh, ethnic, ethnically uh, diverse and, and distinct uh, groups from the, the Russians have been living there for, for centuries and, and doing quite well. Now, that was kind of the early days. Then, so Lenin has a stroke, he passes away, Stalin takes over. Um, you may or may not be familiar with that kind of story, but in any case, <coughs> you all know that Stalin really came to power, and in the mid 1930s, um, the Stalinist terror was. Uh, sweeping through the, the Soviet Union and millions of people were being purged, sent to the gulag or just shot outright. Um, the, it's hard to call it interesting, um, it's kind of perverse to use that term, but the, the big difference then in say the indigenous Siberians uh, experience of repression from say um, Latin Americans was that uh, Native Americans in, in South America, in places like Guatemala and Mexico, um, South America, that they found the government was oppressing specific indigenous groups, whereas Stalin had sort of equal opportunity of repression, if I could put it that way, that um, the problem was to find the kulaks. So who are the rich guys? Line them up and shoot them. Let's find the priests. So who are the religious specialists? And okay, we know an Orthodox, Orthodox priest when we see one, um, they're easy to spot. Now, what are the equivalents in the native communities? The shamans. Okay, shamans. Let's go find the shamans and we'll shoot those. So, in Siberia, the native experience is one of horrific repression, violence, genocide, but it's not limited in ethnic terms, if, if you understand what I mean. Uh, it's it's uh, happening all, all across. But the consequences are much different in the sense that uh, the genocide of, of shamans meant the wiping away of all kinds of uh, ritual and religious knowledge that was esoteric, that was passed on to very few individuals. And when those individuals were systematically wiped out, a lot of that knowledge was lost. And indeed, uh, Korak people will talk about how Stalin killed all the shamans. And we, we don't have any shamans, or the shamans we have these days are not like they used to be. Uh, and by that they mean, well, in the old days, uh, a shaman could stump his foot and the mountain would split in half. It was so powerful. Or, uh, yeah, there was a shaman, they put him in prison, but he just thought about it and walked right through that wall and, and freed himself. And of course, shamans these days, they can't do that sort of thing anymore. Um, they can only make people sick uh, or, or, you know, uh, do bad things. Uh, whereas before Stalin, they could do all kinds of, of good things as well. And, and certainly with source communities, and perhaps a, a different way of talking that is more understandable to politicians, because um, another way that anthropologists have been uh, ignored is that they present all this complexity to the World Bank, or they pr present all this irreducible complexity and just a long list of problems with no solutions to uh, government bureaucrats. And that's not what bureaucrats want. They want bullet points. And, uh, anthropologists have been able to, to learn how to write bullet points, for better or for worse. Um, there are uh, anthropologists that now work in the World Bank. Uh, and you can see these as, as kind of two kinds of enterprise. One, um, you know, it's basically anthropologists helping the World Bank um, screw indigenous peoples and get them off their land, um, which I don't think is actually the case. The World Bankers who I've met um, have said things like, uh, you know, if this is going to be a really bad project for the local uh, indigenous people, I'm willing to uh, derail this mining project. Which is quite stunning uh, to hear a world banker say that. Um, 
but, but I have in, in my one specific interaction on a mining project, um, which actually the local indigenous people were quite keen to see reopened 